Hello, everyone. Welcome to Kids Time with Jesus, brought to you by the Church of Pentecost USA. My name is Auntie Golda. Today is yet another wonderful time with our precious kids where we learn, we talk, and actually we act Bible. It is so good to have everybody here. Today is a really special time. Today is one of our favorite times. Praise moments with Uncle James. Hi, hi, children. Hi. 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 Amen. Welcome, everyone, and thanks so much, everybody, for coming in. As you know, some of our children zoom in with us and others too are watching at home. And so mom and dad, please let the children gather together with everybody else as we discuss very important issues today. Today, we're gonna to talk about praise. All right, so before we go any further, let us have our precious ones that are actually zooming in with us today, introduce themselves. So friends, go ahead and introduce yourselves. Hi, my name is Benedict Yabo from the Cincinnati District. Hi, my name is Declan Afoy from Cleveland District. Hi, my name is Darren Afoy from Cleveland District. Hi, my name is Ariel Lafwada from Harford District. Hi, my name is Ampa Ekukosa from the New Jersey District. Hi, my name is Frank from New Jersey District. Hi, my name is James Oseyam Pofo from PIWC New York District. Hi, my name is Joel Morgan, and I'm from Patterson District. Hi, my name is Esther Morgan, and I'm also from Patterson District. Hello, everyone. Welcome once again to Kiss Time with Jesus. So good to see all of you. And as I told you, Anki James is here today. And so we know, definitely, it's praise moments. It's praise moments. I am so excited because the last time, we had such a wonderful time. Hi, hi, Uncle Jay is here today to teach us more about what? Praise and worship. All right. So, hi, hi, children. Hi, hi. 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 Of the Lord. Amen. 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 Jesus. Friend, Friend of, of little, little children. children. Wonderful, wonderful. So, we are going to start by sharing some um, things that we are going to do today, right? But I am going to share my screen so that we will go ahead, just a minute. I am going to share my screen so that we would actually know our topic for today. And also, please, can you all see my screen? Yep. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So let's talk about today's topic, okay? Today's topic is the power of praise. The power of praise. So we are going to learn that there is power in our praise and praising God in all circumstances. Now, I'm going to let our friend Darren read the memory verse for us. So Darren, go ahead and read for us our memory verse. Okay, I'm reading Exodus chapter 15, the verse 11. Exodus chapter 15, the verse 11, from the Life Application Bible. And this one is, the life application is, they are using the NIV. And I read, who among the gods is like you, O Lord? Who is like you, majestic in holiness, awesome in glory, working wonders? Then I'm going to read it again. Exodus chapter 15, the verse 11. Who among the gods is like you, O Lord? Who is like you, majestic in holiness, awesome in glory and working wonders. Last time, Exodus chapter 15, the verse 11. Who among the gods is like you, O Lord? Who is like you, 
majestic in holiness, awesome in glory, working wonders. Amen and amen. God bless you, Darren. All right, friends, let us all read it one time. Ready? Let's go. Exodus chapter 15, verse 11. Who among the gods is like you, O Lord? Who is like you? Majestic in holiness, awesome in glory, working in wonders. Amen. 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 God bless you. Now, our scripture reading for today is Acts 16, 16 to 34. And let us all listen as Esther read our scripture for us. Amen. 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 I'm reading from the Bible ESV. And I read, as we were going to the place of prayer, we were met by a slave girl who had a spirit of division divination and brought her owners much gain by fortune telling she followed paul and us crying out these men are servants of the most high god who proclaim to you the way of salvation and this she kept doing for many days paul having become greatly annoyed turned and said to the spirit i command you in the name of jesus christ to come out of her, and it came out that very hour. But when her owners saw that their hope of gain was gone, they seized Paul and Silas and dragged them into the marketplace before the rulers. And when they had brought them to the magistrates, they said, these men are Jews and they are disturbing our city. They advocate customs that are not lawful for us as Romans to accept or practice. The crowd joined in attacking them and the magistrates tore the garments off them and gave orders to beat them with rods. And when they had inflicted many blows upon them, they threw them into prison, ordering the jailer to keep them safely. Having received this order, he put them into the inner prison and fastened their seat in the stocks. About midnight, Paul and Silas was praying and singing hymns to God, and the prisoners were listening to them. And suddenly, there was a great earthquake, so that the foundations of the prison were shaken. And immediately, all the doors were opened, and everyone's bonds were fastened. When the jailer woke up and saw that the prison doors were open, he drew his sword and was about to kill himself supposing that the prisoners had escaped. But Paul cried with a loud voice, do not harm yourself for we are all here. And the jailer called for light and rushed in and trembling with fear. He fell down before Paul and Silas. Then he brought them out and said, sirs, what must I do to be saved? And they said, believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved, you and your household. And they spoke the word of the Lord to him and to all who were in his house. And he took them the same hour of the night and washed their wounds. And he was baptized at once. He and all his family, then he brought them up into his house and set food before them. And he rejoiced along with his entire household that he had believed in God. Amen. Acts 16, 16 through 34. Amen. 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 God bless you, Esther. God bless you, everyone. So at this point, Uncle James, we will hand over to you. So you go ahead. Okay. All right, guys. Um, it's good to be back. Um, you're welcome back again to Praise Moments with me, Uncle James. And um, where our focus here is what? is to learn about what it means to praise God and to look at examples from scripture to see what it means to praise God and how we can do it to bring God glory. And so we are beginning a series that we've entitled 
the power of praise. Can we say it together? The power, the power of, of praise. 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 Amen. And so today is our very first lesson um, in that series. And we want to explore why is praise said to be so powerful? We want to look at some examples in scripture, in the Bible, and see um, how do we encourage each other to give God the kind of praise that, you know, draws the power of God into our lives and into our families and into our situations. Amen. So Amen. if you're ready, let's dig in. All right. So we already read our scripture, our main scripture, and we want to, you know, go through a few questions discussing some of the issues and see what we learn out of it. Amen. All right. So first question to you is, where was Paul and Silas when they were arrested? Where were they? Anybody? Yeah, Benedict, go ahead. Oh, yeah. They were in Philippi. They were in Philippi or Philippi. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Okay. Uh, Declan, you wanted to say something? No, I just wanted to answer the next question. <laughs> 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 okay. And Esther, too. Okay. So let's do. Declan. Declan, what were they doing over there? They were looking for a house of prayer or a place they could play, pray. They were looking for a house of prayer in Philippi. Okay, Esther, how about you? They were looking for a place to pray and others were looking too. for. A, okay, all right. Uh, Darren, you wanted to add something? Yes, I wanted to add that when you read the Bible, in the same Acts chapter 16, when you read the verse 13, it says, On the Sabbath, we went outside the gate to the river, where we expected to find a place of prayer. We sat down and began to speak with the women who had gathered there. That's the verse 13. So that means that they were really looking for a place of prayer because that's usually what they, what you do on Sabbath. You don't just say, hey, Sabbath, I don't do nothing. Or, I don't okay. do anything. All right. All right. Thank you guys for those answers. Yes, indeed. They were looking for a place of prayer, but essentially they had gone to Philippi, which was in a region called Macedonia. Macedonia. They had gone there because Paul had received a vision in chapter 15 that he was supposed to go there to go and preach about Jesus. Right. So when they got to Philippi, they decided to look, it was a Sabbath day, like Darren just told us, and they were just looking for a place to what? To join other Jews in order to pray. Yes, James, you wanted to say something. Oh, I just wanted to ask, like, is it Macedonia, like a part of Greece or something? Yes, Macedonia. it is. Yes, okay. Macedonia is part of the larger nation of Greece. So Macedonia was a region or an area in Greece, and Philippi was a city in Macedonia. Yes, Benedict. Uh, I just want to say that, what you just said, that if you fast forward, they're actually walking in Greece. Yes, exactly. So they were in Greece. Paul was, Paul and Silas were Wasn't Paul traveling. Like mother Greek, or was that his father? Like, wasn't one of his parents, like, Greek and the other a Jew? Uh, so that or was Timothy. That was Timothy, okay. That was Timothy, yes. Earlier in chapter, in the same chapter 16 that we read, you would hear about Timothy. Timothy was one person who believed in the message of Jesus that Paul preached. So he indeed became a disciple of, of, you know, of Jesus. And Paul took him as a son and was, you know, um, working with him. So yes, in that moment, yes, Timothy yeah. was, Timothy had a Greek mother and a Jewish father. So yes. All right. So let's go on. Um, so this whole issue about a demon possessed girl and Paul casting out a demon <laughs> out of a demon possessed girl. Did he have to do that? Was that the right thing to do? Yes. 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 Oh, okay. <laughs> a very resounding yes. Okay. Let me get your reasons for why he needed to do that. Let me start from top of my screen, Benedict. Then I'll come to Darren and then I'll come to James. Okay, Benedict, well, go ahead. If, 
probably if what I think is if they just left the uh, well one they cast it they cast the demon the demon off the girl because like why well, just leave a demon in somebody in the first place and also like Jesus also cast out demons and the Bible says you have to walk in Jesus steps so Jesus do have to copy him and the main goal is to spread the word around and also that sets the woman free from the slavery because basically because of her demon the demon spirit is being enslaved for some fortune telling which god really hates because he wants to be the only one who knows the future so mm. he did the, the, um paul knew that so he just had to cast out the demon and also that frees her from the bond of the devil mm. okay wow that's that's a lot of things to unpack there so we are talking about you know, Jesus cast out demons, so Paul was just following in the footsteps of Jesus. We also have uh, freeing the girl from, you know, being used to just make money and definitely fortune telling God hates because he only wants to be the one who knows and tells the future. Okay, Daryl. Dar um, I have two main reasons. The first reason is that you can't exactly believe what you do since they are demons. And because of that, if people, yes, Paul and Silas were servants of God, we were telling her to be saved. But this was coming from a demon. If it was, I wouldn't believe a demon since, well, it's a demon. And then another reason is because Paul was preaching that you shouldn't trust demons and fortune tellers and things like that. And then this demon is telling you, and a fortune teller is telling you, yes, they are servants. You can't exactly be like, you know, I'm saying you shouldn't do that, but hey, I'm going to do that anyway. I'm going to listen to this for many, many days. Until... So he got very troubled. That's what the life application Bible says. He got very troubled. Okay. So, yes, definitely. Um, we are preaching about Jesus. Jesus, the only one through whom all men must be saved. So why are we now listening to a demon tell us about who somebody is or somebody mm. is not? So definitely, Darren, you have a point. James and then Ariel. The only thing I noticed about this show is that exact same topics we, we have on the show is the exact same conversations I have with my parents. Oh. It just so <laughs> happens that me and okay. my dad were literally talking about this story sometime recently. So when I, right. I always hear this story, I always thought that it was Paul who just got annoyed at some woman mm -hmm. and decided to cast out her spirit because she comes here, she's like, these men are, are, are men of the most high God coming to preach to you salvation. I, I, I didn't see what was wrong with that. So I was, I was asking dad, like, well, why would Paul do that? So, so then we have to look at the history now of this woman. It says that she had a spirit by which she did fortune telling, right? Mm -hmm. And my dad said that when Paul and Silas were walking around in town, could you tell that they were men of the most high God coming to preach to you salvation? There's no way you could mm -hmm. just see two men on the street and know exactly what they're trying to do. So this woman in that community, she's always been fortune telling things and she's actually making money. So what my dad was trying to say is that she was trying to make it seem that because of her spirit that was inside of her, she tried to make it seem like she was the one who knew the future. Because she wanted to tell us because of her spirit, that the people of the community knew who Paul and Silas was. So that the reason why Paul and Silas comes and then he turns the spirit out because it's like, it's not, you're not the reason why we're here, you know? Mm -hmm. You're not the one who's telling us who we are. So that in itself is one, that's, that's the reason why Paul and Silas, you know, kicked, um, turned the spirit out of the woman. That, that, that's just one, you know, thing I wanted to say. All right. Yep, spot on with that, James. Ariel. So when we go to um, uh, Acts chapter 16, verse seven, uh, 17 to 18, it says, She followed Paul and the rest of us, shouting, These men are servants of the, uh, of the Most High God, who are telling you the way to be saved. She kept this up for many days. Finally, Paul became so annoyed that he turned around and said to the Spirit, In the name of Jesus Christ, I command you to come out of her. At that moment, the Spirit left her. All right, so um, she it says she kept it up for many days. So Paul became annoyed and said to the spirit and kind of got it out of her. 
Um, Paul was keyword annoyed, and I can tell he knew something was wrong with her. Kind of like all the facts that uh, James said. I think God kind of like came into him and said, no, something isn't right. And so um, he felt, uh, he made um, Paul kind of like feel a uh, spiritual opposition. Mm. Mm. All right, let revert back to Benedict. So good points there, Ariel. Yes, Benedict. And I kind of agree with, I just want to branch off Ariel. It's kind of not that you feel, but sometimes it's not just that you feel, oh, this person is wrong. But sometimes your actions speak better than your words. Mm. Like sometimes somebody doesn't have to talk. You just you can learn a lot of things about somebody. It's about how they look and how they act. So like the girl, of course, she was acting funny because she was possessed by demons. And demons always tend to get annoying because when they start tempting you, that's why you give in. When demons are always tempting you because they're getting annoying. Then like, okay, there's some there's some little money and the candy. We used to buy ice cream. No. You go used to buy ice cream. No. We used to buy ice cream. You're going to keep coming and keep coming and keep getting louder and louder until, until you have two options. You give in or leave me alone. Exactly. Yeah. So definitely to the point all of you guys have raised, it, it must have been very irksome for Paul and Silas, especially Paul, because they had gone into that place. Nobody knew them. They knew what they wanted to do. And at the end of the day, just the, the hounding, the persistent hounding of the, of the girl and her, uh, you know, her handless, you know, the people she was making money for, just got to Paul and it's like, you know what? That, like, no, this, this cannot continue because it's just a big distraction. She was a big distraction. I'll take Darren and then we'll go to our next question. I think Paul was actually doing a favor to the woman, not just because of the fact that, well, <clears throat> the woman was being freed, but because hey, financially, the woman must have been getting lower and lower every day. Because each every if every day you hear the same thing, that these men are men of God, these are men of God, then you aren't fortune telling. They're just stating a the fact then. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So okay. freed. The man was so free. Actually, Paul also freed the woman physically also. Because I don't think the, the slave, the slave owners would be like, you know what? This demon possessed girl. You see, what we needed there for was money. But now that this spirit has been removed from him, we should pass the spirit, not the woman. What's she there for anyway? You see? Well, yep. I see your point. I see your point. The woman was freed. Yeah, yep. that's freedom. Yeah. Okay. Um, hi, hi, children. I think uh, 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 James is frozen a little bit, but we will still continue as we wait for him to get back on. All right. So just as, as the James was saying, Elder James was saying that there was a reason, right, that Paul had to really yeah, James, go ahead before I finish my thoughts. So um I think one um reason why Paul did that was because he could relate to the well, Elder James, are you oh. back? Awesome. Uh, awesome. Uh James, go ahead. Okay. And then he, James. I think he could relate yes, to how the the um girl was what the girl was going through because Paul used to be Saul, right? If yes, I am. Yeah. Paul used to be Saul. So he was um firmly opposing anything having to do with Christ. You see, he was the one who held the people's jackets mm -hmm. while they were stoning. So <laughs> that in itself, he wasn't stoning the people, but that in itself is evil because was enabling. how are mm -hmm. you calm enough to go around and say, jackets, give me your jackets, calm enough sitting in the presence of murder? Mm -hmm. So even if he's not the one <laughs> stoning the people, the mindset, that the, the, the reason why mm -hmm. he's even in that atmosphere shows that he's also evil. And then we have this spirit, this girl who's possessed by a demon. And demons, rather, instead of, he, he used to um, be against people who were Christian. Now this demon's against anything that has to do with God mm -hmm. in general. 
So I think Paul was doing was liberation because he kind of felt, you know, he, he kind of um, felt how the girl was feeling. And I, don't, mm-hmm. I also think Paul did that because it was the will of God. Because it, whenever someone is using worship, they always use the story of Paul and Silas, right, in, in the prison when they sing the song and then the foundations of the prison shake mm-hmm. and their chains break, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. That's one of the most common worship scriptures. So if Paul and, and you know, if Paul didn't cast out the demon, the slave owners wouldn't have been mad and they wouldn't have been thrown into jail. So I also think that was the will of God for Paul's life. Mm-hmm. He, he knew the exact sequence in which he wanted things to unfold. Like before Jesus came, John the Baptist had to prepare the way. So I mm-hmm. really think that it was the will of God for Paul and Silas's life. Hey, Amen. Well, good points there. Yes, those very good insights. Darren. I wanted to say that at first I'm like, after reading this many, many times, I'm like, so Paul, so I mean, you knew she was demon possessed. So the first time you saw her, why didn't you like, I cast you right now? <laughs> <laughs> and then I realized that this may be weird, but maybe Paul was helping them financially. Because like this, I mean, this is the first time you're going to get very rich. Oh, hey, these are people of Christ. Plus, very people who want to be violent. And by doing that, you could probably also save that family. Because if Paul hadn't casted out the demon, the prisoner, the what what the, hmm, the jailer wouldn't have been able to, you know, be saved. Because then they'll, they'll have no need to be in jail. I mean, they're just passing. They're doing their own thing. But because they came into the woman's business, well, they ended up mm. getting beaten up. Plus, I think for what James was saying that James was actually, I, I agree with James because James was saying that Paul was taking their jacket. Then I realized that Paul wasn't doing it for free. I understand that when people are putting your jackets for you, you should be careful because when mm-hmm. you don't know if they're the next Paul. <laughs> All right, so right. other James, I think you have to ask Joel something because Joel, you took quiet yes. for me today. So what do you have to say about all of that, Joel? Uh-huh. your thoughts. You're muted. Joel, you're muted. You have you're to muted, Joel. Mute Joel. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. There uh-huh. you go. Yes, go ahead, Joel. So, um, the lady was annoying Paul a lot and um he cast a demon out of her. And then um people were using her for money for like mm-hmm. um what what's it called? Like the mind reading thing. Mm-hmm. And then um they got mad. And then they're like, oh, he's a Jew and he's like disturbing our city. So then, um, like they beat him and then they put him in prison, and um, and then like an earthquake shook and then, um, the guard he like he learned his mistake from um, like you know, from like doing that, and then um, he tried to kill himself, but um, Paul convinced him not to and made him a Christian. Wow, Joel, you summed up everything for us. God bless you. Auntie, quick Thank question. You. Was this before went Paul and Silence it. went to Athens? Okay. Or was this after? Yeah, hold on. I think this was after. Okay, so that, that would make sense because, I mean, if they, you're mad they, they at that, people Athens don't know your God. I'm, and anything opposing your God would make you pretty annoyed already. So mm-hmm. that, that's also another reason. Frank, go ahead. Uh, so I want to say about why uh, Peter or uh, Paul cast the spell out of the, the girl because if uh, mm-hmm. Paul, let's say Paul did not cast the demon out of the girl, the, the demon mm-hmm. will continue doing bad things. Then the people will suffer and like some of them may die and the demon will continue because the mm-hmm. demon uh, only do bad things, not good things. So what Paul did that cast the demon out of the girl was a good thing. Oh. Amen. Auntie, I have a question. So, okay. if hang on a are, second. Who, oh, that's is then, that Esther? No, it was Frank. It's me. All right. Uh, oh, Frank. Yes, go ahead. So let me just say, if Paul didn't um cast a spell out of the de- um the girl, um okay. would the girl All go right. to mm-hmm. everybody in the town? Well, again, these are things that we don't we don't know what was going to happen if Paul did not but all we know from the story is that Paul saw something that was not right and he acted to stop it 
and mm -hmm. I think he's oh, okay. What? I can so wait a minute. I think Elder James, uh Elder James, please can you take that again? I think we lost you a little bit on that. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Elder James, can you? We can't hear you. Yeah. Okay. Oh, we can hear you. Can't, you can't hear me. Now we can. Now okay. we can. Now we can. All right. So now you can. You can't yes. hear me. So the point is, we don't know what would have happened if Paul did not respond. All we know from the story is that once Paul encountered something that was evil, he what responded in the most godly way that he could and dealt with it. Yes, Daryl, now take your question. And then Benedict. That will the next question. Is it yes. Frank or Ampa's question? So yes, Ampa. James, go ahead. And then Benedict would. Okay. I don't think that Paul, I'm not necessarily saying yes or no, but what I think rather would happen is that I, I think Paul was meant to cast out that demon. Like I said, mm -hmm. the will of God. Mm -hmm. Because, um, you see, when, when I said earlier, I forgot that um, the jailer, that was one way he got salvation. And it, it says sure. him and his entire family were saved. Mm -hmm. So now you might be wondering, why would God go through all the trouble of getting Paul and Silas whipped and beating and put in <laughs> jail and sending his personal angels to come and rescue, you know, this one man who's not even a, he's not even a Christian. But he was doing that so that one, him and his entire household can be saved. So with God going through all the trouble, he wanted to make sure that man was saved. That's why as, as, his, uh, as his children of God, that means he'll be willing to do anything to bring us back to him. So I'm not necessarily saying yes or no, because we like, like Uncle James said, we have the same name, so I'm going to agree with him. Like, like Uncle James said, we, we have no idea what would happen. It's up to our speculation. But I rather think that um, Paul and Silas, you know, they, they, were, they, they were going to cast out the demon once they arrived. That's just my personal thought. Amen. All right. All right. Um, is that Benedict? And then yeah. Aaron. I think it was Aaron today. No, Benedict. <laughs> Go ahead. Benedict. Benedict's first. I feel like to, to answer on um, Ampa's question, I could feel like even if Paul didn't do nothing, he will eventually find out because since it's a demon thing, like I said, it's convincing and more a demon's character traits is more of a persuasive. Like if not that person just gonna tell you once and let you think about it, it's gonna keep coming back. And over and over again until, like I said, you give in or you tell him to leave you alone. Mm. Either way, who the model that was live by? Even if something, even if um, even if it wasn't you, or even though I didn't do nothing, I'm gonna do something. Even though the demon it didn't have nothing to do with um with Paul, he still had to do the right thing. You can, like I said, you can't really just leave a teammate hand and you have to bring. The main goal for a Christian is to bring everyone to God. Even if you mean cast a demon or risking your life, you have to do it. And that's a Christian duty. So, like I said, even if it is set up for um the, the jailer to be saved. So, even if you didn't do something, you still should pray or help the person, even though you have no connection, because we're all brothers and siblings. Amen. 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 All right. Let me take Esther, then I'll go. Wait, actually, let me do Darren, then I'll do Esther. Darren had his hand up first. Okay. Yeah, what, Darren, I wanted, go ahead. what I wanted to say. Okay, I forgot. Yep, I forgot. Oh, mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> Esther, go ahead. Um, are we on our next question? Uh, not yet. Uh, not yet. Darren, are you good? Yes, I think I realized it now. Yes. <laughs> what I wanted to say is that mm -hmm. this just I just figured out that the demon was actually being controlled by God. 
Because I don't think any normal demon is, any the devil is just going to come and start speaking the truth like, hey, these are servants of the most high. And he did it multiple times. Because I then I think that was like really literally ordained by God. And that is it bumps me to my next point, was which was that I think God actually tried to save the jailer because if he saved the jailer, the one who actually puts the bad guys in prison, then you basically save the bad guys also because the jailer will be sitting there, he'll get bored and start telling them. So, you know, one time I had this, uh, actually this probably what the jailer said. One time I was there, you know, falling asleep, stuff like that. Then people, because of someone singing, there came earthquakes, everyone was mm-hmm. Everyone, and then this guy, his name is Apostle. He's traveled all the world, all around the world, beaten many times. You think mm-hmm. that would make trust me? <laughs> they beat him many times for something. I don't really care about it. I'd I'd stop like in 30 seconds. They beat him many times. He came here, then he saved me and my entire family. Now we are going to be working on gold very soon. I think people will be happy to <laughs> that's right. <laughs> All right, there, good point. All right, Esther, let me take Esther. Esther, are you ready? Oh, I thought I was, I was going to answer the next question. The next question. Okay, James, you're going to hold okay. your horses and let's move on because I... Uncle, what'd you say? I want us to get to the we saying you horses and... Um, unless you wanted to make a comment before I move on. Yeah, I just wanted to say one last thing. Okay. That, um, I don't really think that God per se, like, Darren said that, like, you know, any normal demon wouldn't technically, you know, be cast out. Yeah. Um, I don't think it determines the power of the demon, but rather the power mm-hmm. of the relationship with God. You have to take a look at Paul. You see, any, any Saul in the Bible has has evil characteristics, you know? The first Saul and then Saul. But look at the transformation that this guy went through, how close he's been with God. He literally traveled, spent money, time, effort, and resources to kill and imprison people of God. And yet yeah. this man is preaching salvation. So if that, that's a very powerful connection, you know, that, um, what's it called? Very powerful connection that Saul must have with God. And if you watch movies, have you noticed that the best friendships are always the one who starts out as enemies? Mm. They always start out as, as enemies, but once they become friends, you always see them so close and inseparable. So mm. I, I really don't think that God per, per se sent this demon but I think it's about the connection of um, Paul and, and, and um, God that allowed him to cast the demon out. That's mm. just my question. All right. Okay. Okay, guys. All right. So let's ha- hang on. Hang on, Darren and Declan. Hang on. Hang on. We're going to move into the next stage of, because that's what our lesson really is about. Let's get into the meat of it. So one question for Esther. Esther wanted to answer the next question. What did the jailer use to secure Paul and Silas in the prison? Esther, that's your question. Um, they used they used shackles mm-hmm. and chains. Shackles. Yes. Auntie Golda, would you be kind enough to put up that um, your 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 thing? You, you had a beautiful illustration there of the kind of shackles and stocks that um that they Paul and had Silas. In there. Yes, they had on them. Yeah, I love that. I love that. I love, I love that illustration. So, Esther, yes, that was the right question. It was wooden and metal shackles. Right. Now, do we have it? Hold on. Uh, yeah. Hold on. Hold okay. on one second. Oh yeah, yeah. I think it's the that one. Yeah. Uh, the next Let's one. Let's go one that. more. Mm-hmm. One more, yep. Yeah. There we go. Okay. So, guys, let's focus on this picture. Imagine you've been beaten. You've been whipped. Look at their backs. They've been beaten. They are bloody. They are hurting. What would be the motivation for Paul and Silas in that condition to sing and pray? 
what would be the motivation why would they be motivated to sing and to pray like i'm trying to do the best i could for god and you know things have just gone horribly wrong <laughs> i saved the girl from being demon possessed uh, I, I messed somebody's business up but now i've been beaten and i've been thrown into jail my feet are in this wooden you know thing what will be the motivation darren and declan it looks like your hands have been up for a while let's go so i wanted to say that first of all like when you the motivation i think would be david david you see when like david when in times of trouble he sings and at that time they knew the story of david and other people in the old testament so they should have okay so if they sing, God can rescue them and they, and, and also they can also like, I think, yeah, one, one day we are, one day we are doing our devotion um, together and that, and my dad just said that there's just one time just stops depending on yourselves and they started mm. to depend on God. So when, like, songs can be very powerful. Like so the uh, okay, <laughs> but like your mouth, like you should control your tongue. Mm. That okay. Um, All right, I Darren. Was, I want to say that this is very practical. What did you have? You up someone's say. business, and then people have told you that you are going to be flogged, and not only are you flogged, people have punched you some mm. many times to stop punching you. And then you made it alive, you're going to be like, you know what, I'm going to stop believing in God. Me, if it were me, I don't know, my body isn't too strong. So if it were me, they would have killed me right then and then. <laughs> so me, I'm happy that I'm alive. And what Paul was trying to say, if you read um, the Bible, I think, <laughs> yes, he said that when I yes, he said that I stopped depending on myself, that means that first he used to be trying to, you know, whenever they beat you, uh, you know, when you know how when you get in trouble and your dad is trying to beat you and then they're trying to judge it to move around. <laughs> I mean, that and I was like, you know what? If God, you beat me, beat me. Okay, I'm done. I'm just going to do what you want me to do. He stopped doing that. He and his friends, Mas and those guys, they stopped doing that. They stopped looking and like that. Instead, whenever they had an opportunity to preach, they just preached. So I think that they're, they're much would be that they made it alive. It punched you. The more that punched you, you'd mess up someone's business. Mm. You have the right to beat you. Yes, not kill you, but every right to beat you. Okay. Um, James, go ahead. Oh, yeah, okay. Yes. So oh. before I say my okay. um my answer let's take a little background history here okay so it says when her owners realized i'm reading from acts chapter 16 16 to 40 the mm -hmm. verse 19 mm -hmm. to i'm just going to skip parts when her owners realized that their hope of making money was gone they seized paul and silas and dragged them into the marketplace to face the authorities and then verse 22, this is after the um, authorities have judged them guilty. It says that the crowd joined in the attack against Paul and Silas, and the magistrates ordered them to be stripped and beaten with rods. So here you see that um, Paul and Silas, when, when the owners of the um, demon-possessed woman, they took him to the marketplace. Now, typically in a town, there's one of the most popular spots, either the town square or the marketplace, because every single person in that town has to go to the marketplace mm -hmm. in order to get food and basic supplies. So that is the most common and well-known, most public spot in that city. And that is where they watch criminals being beaten. They always take them to the public spot and make an example of them. So by the owners bringing Paul and Silas here, they were already condemned. And then... What's interesting about the verse 22 is that they weren't going to flog them. It was after the crowd had beaten them first is when they decided to, you know what, we're going to punish you guys. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
So I just wanted to convey exactly how much pain Paul and Silas went through because of this one decision. Mm -hmm. Now, when you showed the marvelous illustration, right, not only were they shackled their hands, their feet were shackled, meaning that they're not going anywhere. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they, yeah. After they're being humiliated, they won't be able to go anywhere. Yeah. So what motivation could Paul and Silas possibly have in this context? What I'm going to say here is that th Paul's motivation was that, number one, this, what he went through now, is nothing compared to what he went through in his life mm. when he met God for the first time. Okay. Because he was hunting down Christians, and the God that they serve personally comes to talk to you. That's Paul right. just thought right then and there he was going to die. Like, he's killed so many, imprisoned so many, humiliated them, and then God just comes and says, hey, why, why, are, you, why are you attacking mm -hmm. me? So if I was Paul right there, I, I would have been so scared right out of my mind. And then God decides to say, you know what, I'm, I'm just going to make you my disciple. Mm -hmm. There's this quote that mm -hmm. says, the worst way to punish a man with unforgiveness is to forgive him. So right there, what, what Paul went through in that moment was absolutely nothing compared to the physical pain he went through. And mm. also, I think, wasn't it Paul who says that if you are punished, oh no, God said that if you are punished for my sake, it should even be an honor that you're even punished for my sake. And our topic today is about praise and worship. And Benedict, last time we had um, a praise and worship with Uncle James, Benedict says that you worship God in the highs and the lows. So even like Darren said, even if nothing, the fact that you're actually alive, that in itself should be a reason to worship God. So worship God, okay. All right, okay, James. I will take Benedict, and then I'll make a comment. We got to push through this. Uh, Benedict, I'll take you. Well, James yes. kind of hated what I'm about to say. <laughs> so, 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 so say it in a shorter way. <laughs> uh -huh. One, you have to like God, like you have to praise God in the high and the low, mm -hmm. and don't just because that's just cheating the system. And two, like God starts to free Paul, and later, later, if you read ahead, God actually frees the yes, earthquake as an indication of the power in midnight prayer. The supreme victory that we have in Jesus Christ. Is manifest through our faith. So that's like quitting our faith because we know that Jesus, they already knew that, man, we're, we're doomed, we're in jail and that stuff. But then you don't give up. You have to keep going. Life doesn't stop when your dog dies. So, mm. the prayer, mm -hmm. and pray that one, God will change in people's hearts so they're not going nowhere. And two, God will save us for where we are. And later he does so even though you're at a point where at your lowest point, you have to have that faith. And that's why most most people are like, that's why I see sometimes my siblings and that doesn't make like faulty mistakes. Like when we usually play like board games or something, they say, man, I can't do that. And they end up losing to me. And I keep saying, you said you couldn't do it. So you can't do it. Mm -hmm. Believe in yourself. You have to have that type of faith. You know, even though I'm kind of getting, I'm going down, I pray that God will help me so I can start climbing up. Later. Hey, man. Okay. All right. Thank you, Benedict. Um, hold on. Ariel. Let me take Ariel. Then I'll make my comment. Yes, Ariel, go ahead. You had your hand up earlier. All right. So um, the reason why I think that uh, Paul and Silas had motivation to kind of like sing praises was because of the faith that they had in God. Mm. The faith that they had in God was what made them uh, kind of like get strength from him and also what made them persevere through all the pain and through all the suffering that they had to go through. Without God, none of this would have happened and mm. all the things that, all the good things, all the bad things, it could have happened. So I think it was kind of like a thank you and and kind of like a thank you to God because God always saw them through uh, saw them through at their worst points and so yeah they sang praises unto him kind of like as a thank you and their appreciation okay Wonderful. thank you Ariel good 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 one there 
I just want to make this point, and it's a very important point that shows up earlier on in the book of Acts. Now, when Jesus was leaving the disciples and actually he left, one of the things the disciples realized was that they wanted to so be like Jesus, right? They had a driving motivation to be like Jesus. And because they had seen Jesus go through a lot of suffering whilst he was on earth, one of the things they wanted to do was to actually to be counted worthy to suffer like Jesus. So when you read Acts chapter 5, you will see that, you know, the disciples, the apostles, once they were beaten, once they were insulted, once they were threatened, they were like, you know what? I'm so excited that I get to go through. All right, so do the things that my master went through. What can you hear me? Yeah, okay. oh, we can hear you now. Paul and Silas were just minute. excited about the fact. Okay, Paul and Silas were just excited about the fact that they could be in the way suffered. They found in the fact that you know what we saw. Okay, so hi, hi, children. Hi, hi, hi. 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 Then uh, we are having a little difficulty with Elder James. Sometimes you freeze and <laughs> you kind of come back. So um, when you hear me say hi, hi, children, it means you probably um has frozen and then we'll wait another bit right so um i think we got uncle james points right about how the disciples want to associate themselves um, okay. with jesus Froze up. With yeah jesus. so uncle james okay. are you i think you say hello to us again and then hello can you yes, hear me you're good yes, yeah yes, you're okay good. Yeah, yeah. all right so let me take declan and darren and then let's move on to the next couple of questions and try and finish up amen. amen all right declan and darren make it quick <laughs> <laughs> yes what i wanted to say is that well then well we know we all know about the apostle james first person mm -hmm. to the uh -huh. um, say when you well. <laughs> <laughs> that's james, right verse two and three uh -huh. says Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever uh, you face trials of many kinds, verse 3, because you know that the testing of your faith develops perseverance. And this is a guy who was the first to die. That means the apostles, also uh, like prophet Silas and apostle Paul, they must have known this scripture. I mean, you can't just be going to a battle for and not know how to use your weapon. Mm -hmm. and, that's and if they know that James died, they also know that, well, he actually knew what he was saying because he died first by the sword mm -hmm. oh, See, what i'm trying to say is okay so yeah maybe that hurt a little but still what i'm trying to say is that um to this is the true brother this like the literally <laughs> biological <laughs> brother of jesus christ and if he was to go first uh, then you too you must be really wanting to feel the pain a little please then you know so you what is right because if you are preaching and okay. everyone's like, hey, 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 and this is some guy who's been, you know, I'd say he's, he had this God, his house is basically a God, and his house is basically his God to him. Then you know that you're not doing what is right to God because mm. well, no one who's like that will be shouting, hey. <laughs> All right, okay. let me take Declan. This is actually going to be a very short comment, but then, oh, um, okay. I me and my brother have yeah. actually watched a movie called Facing the Giants. Mm -hmm. And that movie, it's about like trusting in God. And it will, and when you look at Paul and Silas, it is the same thing that happened. And also, like they, they said one statement that I liked. Mm -hmm. We praise God when we lose. We praise God when we win. So if we win the souls, we still praise God. If we lose the souls, we still praise God, no matter what we praise God. So that was what I think that's another motivation that 
that even though they haven't watched this in the day. <laughs> amen, <laughs> amen, amen. I just say one quick, 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 quick comment. Very, very, very short. All right. <laughs> <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> I just wanted to say um one thing I, I noticed that okay, from, the from irony this, of this from, go ahead. that Paul was the one holding the jacket when people were being publicly mm. humiliated for following Christ, and yet here he is too. He has mm. his this is his turn. That's, uh-huh. that's just one thing I just noticed. I told you that's it's quick. Right. That was quick. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. Okay, so let's go to our next question. So, an earthquake took place after, you know, in the middle of their praying because they were singing out loud for the other prisoners to hear. An earthquake took place. Why do you think God decided or God allowed the earthquake to take place? What was the whole point of that? That was very dramatic. Yeah, I know. What, what was God trying to do with the earthquake? What do you guys think? I don't have an answer, but what do you guys think? Let me go to... <laughs> Wait, hold on. I haven't heard from Joel. Joel has been very quiet today. <laughs> Joel, this yes. question is for you. Before the other guys get a, okay. a bite at it, God allowed an earthquake. Why did why do you think that God responded with an earthquake to the praise that um, Paul and Silas were giving in the prayer? Honestly, I think you would like to um, make sure like that prison guard remembers something. You mm. know, like um, mm. like it could have like it could have been like a ghost leading Paul out, like in one of the Bible stories. Um, I forgot. Okay. Angel, but, but an was, angel. It was like, oh yes, mm-hmm. thank you. <laughs> and then um. So he did an earthquake to make sure that he rem- he'll remember that when he's a Christian, like, oh, um, God taught me this so that I can become a Christian and I've learned from my mistakes and stuff. Okay. All right. All right. So let me take, uh, okay, Esther wants to speak now. So I'll give Esther the opportunity as well. Um, I want then to- I'll come to, uh-huh. Sorry. I wanted to add to what Joel said. And I just wanted to say that I think that he's right because- if God didn't do that earthquake, then he wouldn't have become a believer. And mm. also, I think the earthquake would, like, if it was, like, let's say Jesus, like, God just came up to him and just told him, he wouldn't really remember that. So God did, like, it would just be a memory that's, like, locked in his mind that he would always remember until the day he died. Mm. Amen. Amen. All right. Uh, All right. Let me take Benedict, a quick one. I got two things to say. One, for Esther, if God, if you see God, that's an ultimate memory right there. <laughs> you away. You don't want to see God. And two, on um, the earthquake, the word of God speaks like an earthquake. Remind us of you. We should be faithful in the good times and the bad times. And also that our voices are power. That we need to help everyone. And we shouldn't take advantage of them and be selfish. James, go ahead. Okay. Um, there are two reasons. Number one, I think God wanted to flex a little. Because, I mean, <laughs> if you're an all-powerful God who can control times and seasons, wouldn't you want to, like, you know, be a little dramatic? <laughs> but I also think God wanted to do is, um, he wanted to speak here. If you look at the story of Gideon, we, we talked about Gideon. Mm-hmm. And um, when God had 300, he had, like, he had a lot of men. The guy was like, I'm, I'm going to use 300 so that Israel won't say it was because of their numbers that they won the war. Mm, uh-huh. So God wanted to show his power in this context. Now, let's take a look at earthquakes. You see, every day an earthquake happens. You may not feel it. Like Earthquakes technically isn't like the big, dramatic, end-of-the-world situation that you see on TV. What's more realistic is just like a slight tremor in the ground, and that's it. But humans, what we hate is dealing with something we don't understand. That's why babies cry. And that's why people think God is not real because they say you can't see God and Mm. they can't feel God. So what we hate dealing with is with something we don't understand. 
So when you look at a hurricane, you know a hurricane's coming because of our technology. You're able to, you know, get the weatherman, turn on the TV, look at the news. And you have the time to drive away from the hurricane and make preparations. But with an earthquake, no matter wherever you are, once it strikes, it strikes, and it strikes hard. So, yeah, so when Jesus, um, when God was using the earthquake, he wanted to show us what the power of worship truly meant. Amen. And it wasn't like him sending down the earthquake, because he could have sent down the earthquake when they, when, they, when they were beating up Paul and Silas. Before he sent the earthquake, something had to happen. And that something was the worship of Paul and Silas, meaning that before... There is a form of liberation. Like there are some things that can only happen when you worship God. So yeah, I, that, that, that's one reason why I think that um, the uh, earthquake came. Amen and amen. We we'll still wait for Elda to come back, but I'm going to take Ariel and then Darren and Declan. Ariel, go ahead. I think that God just wanted to show that he can do wonders for the people that acknowledge him and call and like people who call on to him for help, people who recognize his power. Hey, man, people who recognize his power. Is Elder back? All right, so Elder, we are still on the question <laughs> with Darren and Declan, okay? Okay, all right. Yes, Darren and Declan, go ahead. I'm good. Okay, so I wanted to say this is actually going to be like very, very <laughs> medium <laughs> comment. <laughs> <laughs> so, so um, uh -huh. I, that I think um, the reason why God used an earthquake was first because if He used other things, all of the people that <laughs> yeah, that's uh, true. Fire, fire the people that uh, water, mm -hmm. and they uh, would die. Uh, lightning, it only hit the roof; they can never escape. But then, still, the uh, there might be some people might not also die of that. Uh, but then earthquake, when you look at an earthquake, it shakes the earth and it broke the doors out of it. But then when you look at this, why did Paul and Silas not escape? Mm. Why did like they had a chance to escape or else he was sleeping? Darren, let your brother speak. <laughs> he said that because the child, the jailer, was awake. But, uh, but then the reason why they did escape was because it was intentional. They wanted him to be, they wanted to show him that when you are a Christian, even though in tough times, like when you have the chance to escape and other things, you still stick through that thing. Okay. You see how, like, in, in school, you are learning about a plot. You see how it goes, like, up. Rise in action, then there starts to be problem, and then now there is a when you reach to the end of the part, you see that oh, this person was like a Christian, and two Christians, this is what he learned from being a Christian. You still stick to it and solve it. Mm. Technically, they didn't solve the problem. <laughs> okay, what I want to say is that. God used something a bit less, you know, dramatic. Because, yes, earthquakes are very dramatic for, you know, saving one person and his entire family. But I think God did this because it's a very simple answer, really. To wake up the jailer. When you read the verse 27, it says, the jailer woke up. That's like, that's the starting of the verse 27. The jailer woke up, meaning the jailer was asleep. You see, but when you read... um. Verse 23 and 24, it says, After they had been severely flogged, they were thrown in prison, and the jailer was commanded to guard them carefully. Upon receiving such orders, he put them in the inner cell and fastened their feet in the, in the stocks. What I'm trying to say is that, really, God only did the earthquake to wake up the jailer, not to, you know, make the prisoners escape and things like that. Because if an earthquake were happening and it was a dramatic one like this, everyone would die. But if it was a medium one, like... You know, it just happens and then the earth splits and then, you know, comes back together like, oh, hey, there's a God. You see, so it's a little bit convincing. So I think God only did the earthquake to just wake up the jailer, you know, so like, hey, wakey, wakey, you know, time for to wake up. <laughs> All right, let me take James and then let's try and finish this up. James, go ahead. For once, I actually think Darren's right because, you know, 
Um, he <laughs> was right when he said that the earthquake's purpose was to um, wake up the jailer. But in a way, I kind of disagree, you know. Notice how when the earthquake happened, no harm came to Paul and Silas. Like, think about that. They're bond well, it's ironic how they're in jail, yet they still have chains, meaning that there were the people feared Paul and Silas. And the earthquake, because an earthquake cannot open your chains, it, it, it just shakes the ground and destroys things, you know. It it, it, it it creates damage on a larger scale. It can't accurately pinpoint where your hands are and, and break open the chains. Meaning that for their freedom, God himself opened those chains. So mm -hmm. the purpose of the earthquake was to, because, you know, they were in a jail cell. So it shook open the door and he had to step in and take out the chains. And like, and like um, Darren also said, it woke up the jailer. Because notice how we don't see in the Bible that every other prisoner just ran away. Mm. They, they were also curious too. So it's not technically the jailer and his family who were saved, but in a way, the, the entire prison, everybody heard the word of God. Amen. So yeah, Amen. That, that's my little piece. Um, All right. Well, definitely all the stuff that you guys have been saying um, has been really awesome. And I guess to finish up, we will think about the question that what happens when we genuinely, genuinely and sincerely give praise to God? You know, whenever we, that's our last question, and then we would wrap up. What happens when we genuinely, when we sincerely give praise to God, when we understand what we are saying and we give praise to God? Yes, let me take... Uh, Maybe I should hear from everybody, right, Auntie Golda? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, to wrap up. Let me take from everybody. I want to hear from everybody. Benedict, yes. I just want to say that when we sincerely praise God, we literally just shift our attention and our mindset and everything, and our soul especially, from ourselves and other people to God. And when we do that, we, we get you get the benefits of God, and that is God's presence, the earthquakes, and that stuff, the chains breaking, the doors opening, God's presence. He He's doing that stuff. Amen. Thanks, man. Amen. That's a good one. Yes. Let me go this way to Esther and Joel. Yes, Esther and Joel. What happens when we genuinely and we sincerely praise God? When we praise God, God feels pleasure. And um, when we praise God, it also shows that we are thankful for all he has done for us. Amen. Amen. Okay, Esther? What happens when we praise God is we, we gain new hope as we remember that God is in control and is working mm. for our good. I love that. Yeah. God is Wonderful. in control and is working for our good. That's why Wonderful. we praise him. Darren and Declan, quick ones. Okay, Decker, you want to go first? Actually, I'll go first before it's too much. Okay, what I wanted to say is that when we praise God, every time we praise God, something is something always happens. Because mm. if that Bible, Uncle Jim said that when you read, yeah, I think that's when the, Pente the day of Pentecost happened. You see, when they were worshiping, all of them had come to worship, and everything was going on. They see tanks of fire. Yes, right. I don't want fire droplets to be hitting me. <laughs> you see, but these people were so much in the spirit that they didn't see anything. They were just praying. They continued praying. Bible doesn't say that Apostle James started running from the fire. Mm -hmm. So that, another thing I'm saying is that the earthquakes, you Paul and Silas, they also, when the men they were worshiping because they were in a time of need, well, it's like, you know, well, you have, I've already done a lot for you. You know, you killed a few of my servants, including Stephen, indirectly. Yeah, but still, uh, you know, cause a earthquake save you. So I think that I think that whenever we praise God, something happens. Because Bible says that actually, when you read fragrance to fire, when you watch fragrance to fire that by dancing, you know, you can. He says that first it was fragrance, then it turned to fire. My worship is my weapon. You see, so. When we pray, things, 
worship. A lot of things happen. Sometimes we don't see them because that's spiritual. And if God were to show us every demon that was passing by, we'd miss everything about them. <laughs> Amen. Amen. All right, Declan, okay. let's take you, then I'll come to Ariel. So then we'll finish uh, up with James, Ampa, and Frank. Okay, Declan, quick one. What happens okay. when we praise? So when we praise God, or when we praise God, we have to mean it for something to happen. Because mm. have, mm. have you ever seen somebody saying, Oh, thank you? When he doesn't mean it. Some people may do that, but then, then you don't then you don't actually feel that he actually meant it. You don't actually feel mm. good. But then when you know that he means it, you feel good. You feel like, oh, this person meant it. So that means that okay. So that next time I shall bring some more presents to him. So okay. that is what I said. So you need to, to actually mean it with your heart. Mean it. Amen. All right, Amen. Ariel. Uh, what, what happens when we uh, sincerely and joyfully praise God? What I think is that God uh, hears us and also goes further every single time to protect us. Amen. And it goes further to protect us. James, and then I I'll, round I'll up with Ampa and Frank. That, um, on this show, either Declan or Darren always steals exactly what are you what going, going to say. To say. <laughs> <laughs> and they, like, it, I was really going to talk about the fragrance to fire song. Every single time we talk about worship on this show, that's the, mm -hmm. that's the same song mm -hmm. I always mention. So, as I said, we look at the lyrics, it said that the fragrance of my worship rose up to the Father. Mm -hmm. And if you look in the Old Testament, whenever they were doing um, sacrifices, when they killed the animal and they burned it, what happened? The smoke, the fragrance of that offering they gave to God rose up all the way to heaven, meaning that our worship to God can be an offering. And the, mm. what, what we see that the response to the worship was noises thunderings, and earthquakes, which is exactly what happened to Paul and Silas. So it just says thunderings, like, you know, and lightning and thunder, and it just says any noise in general, meaning any loud noise. God can use any single thing to um, respond to your worship. Mm. Now, when we worship God, the question was, when we worship God sincerely, mm -hmm. what happens? So I'm reading um, what the verse, uh, what's it? Psalms chapter 8, verse 2 from the NASB version from 1997. It says that from the mouth of infants and nursing babies, thou hast established strength because of thy adversaries to make the enemy and the revengeful seize. And if you read the Aramaic Bible in plain English, you so said that from the mouth of young men and boys, you prepared your song because of your enemies to destroy the enemy who avenges. Now, so let's look at the ANNASB. So that from the mouth of infants and of babies. Now, I, I, was, I was saying, so what's an infant? So I, I Googled it, and, and it says that an infant is any child that is under one year old. Any child under one year old is an infant. And one year olds are so helpless. Like they are newborn babies. That's what it says. Any infant that is mature and any nursing baby, that is the power that which God can use the praise of a baby that can't even speak to silence your enemy. Mm -hmm. And if you look at the Aramaic Bible, it says now, in our Aramaic Bible, in plain English, it says that now it's not even about babies. Now it's about any young man and any boy who worships God. God will prepare that song, use it as straight on account of your enemy. Meaning that no matter whoever we are, not this doesn't just apply to men and boys because babies can be all, all genders. So whoever you are, once you worship God and, and you know, sincerely, there has to be a reaction. Once you worship God, God has to accept it and send noises, thunderings, and earthquakes your way. So when Amen. once we worship God um, sincerely, there has to be an acknowledgement of God's presence. Because you look at the um, New Testament, like Darren said, the tongues of fire rested on their head. Now, fire mm -hmm. is a very dangerous thing. 
but it's it, it, it very um delicately rested on there. It didn't burn them. It just rested mm -hmm. on their head. And you also look in the Old Testament, older in the Old Testament, when the, um, they were singing songs and worship to God, and the cloud of God's glory came inside the temple, and they couldn't even worship in the temple anymore mm -hmm. because the cloud of glory stopped them from doing anything that they would normally have done in that. So that, that means that day, church service was closed early. <laughs> Amen. You know, or, or so interrupted. whenever we worship God, uh -huh. there has to be a visible acknowledgement that God Amen. is there. Amen. 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 And to go that, you know, I have a suggestion. I think I think we have to give James uh, his own opportunity to break down this. this <laughs> yeah, I think the next time when you get the chance to give them. <laughs> I heard you saying earlier you're going to give them opportunities to, to preach. preach. Maybe, oh, yes. Ma because maybe, give, maybe give this topic to James to mm -hmm. break it down. Because, because the thing crazy. is, I've realized that I have some <laughs> preachers in my midst. I have some preachers. Tell in me my about midst. it. Yes. And so one of these days, <laughs> you all precious ones, you are going to preach. Yes, sir. Yes, yes ma'am. Yes, yes. All yes. Right. So, um, Elder, I think... Yeah. Um, um, you wanted Amper and Frank, right? But please give Esther the last word because I see she was really also itching to say something. So right okay. after Amper and Frank, then you come to Esther. Esther, okay. All right. Amper, Frank, your turn. What happens when we joyfully and sincerely praise God? So what I think when you are praising God is like making God happy because my mom always told me when I'm doing worship to praise God, right? So when mm -hmm. I praise God, it makes God heart like more happy than before. So that's what I think when I praise God is. Okay, all right, Frank. Let's hear from you. Uh, so what uh, I think when you praise God is like, well, let's say you are in need of trouble, right? And you praise God, like God will find a way to help you in need if you like you need trouble. But like he, sometimes if you pray to God, you are praying for how wonderful He is or how much He has done to you. But sometimes when we really need help, we like praise God to help us in all our things. Because you have to put to the Lord first before you do anything. Wait, Amen. Wait. Amen. Auntie. Amen. So, yes, Esther. Yes. So you know what I'm about to say about like when you praise God, when you are in trouble? Mm -hmm. I mm -hmm. think what Paul did was to praise God and God get him out of his trouble. Amen. That's, that's a good way to look at it. Yes, that's a good way to look at Esther, it. Esther, so, I can see your video. Oh, Esther okay. Are, so Esther guys, will be right back. Esther will be right back working on okay. her. her. So, okay. um, all right. Let me make a comment, mm -hmm. and then I think I heard that I heard I saw Darren. So one of the things about praise is that you can praise God. In the like uh, Ampa said, you can praise God in the midst of your trouble and basically praise him in advance. There is actually a song like that by Marvin Sapp that you can praise God in advance of the thing that you are asking God to do. That's how powerful praise is. So whatever it is that may be going on in your life, when we take the opportunity to say, you know what, God, I want to praise you for what you are about to do. Usually we thank God for what he has done. But the power of praise, one of the powers of praise is that we can praise God for what he's about to do. And basically we are, it's an expression of trust and of faith. We talked about that earlier. You are expressing confidence in God that God, I trust you to do this. That is why I'm giving you the praise in advance of what God is actually going to do. All right, let me take Esther and then I guess we'll round up over there. Mm -hmm. Esther, go ahead. Amen. Amen. Hey, um, for this question, I already answered. Oh, okay. I we can saw see your hand. You. Okay. Oh, I wasn't ahead. raising my hand. Oh, okay. All right. Because Auntie Goda saw we saw your hand. Yeah, up, I thought so she had. we thought you were going to say something. Okay. All right. So, guys, this has been one fascinating discussion. Again, you guys have been great in terms of the contributions, the insights, you know, and everything. Um, so um, if 
Darren, can Auntie Gorda, if you can put up the memory verse again, and then we'll sing, we'll go through our song for the day. Amen. So right. our, memory verse, our memory verse again, and then we'll go through our song. Amen. All right. So our memory verse for today, we'll put it up again and then let's go up one more. No, there you go. Okay. All right. So all of us, so Darren is going to read it once and then all of us are going to read through it. Um, as our memory verse of the day. So those of you joining us online, this is our memory verse for the day, uh, for today's lesson. All right, Darren. Our memory verse is Exodus chapter 15, verse 11. Exodus chapter 15, verse 11, from the Life Application Bible. But I use in the NIV, and I read from the 11. Who, who is like? Majestic in holiness, awesome in glory, working one this. Exodus chapter 15, verse 11. Amen. Okay. Amen. Amen. So we're all going to go through it one more time. Our memory verse for today, Exodus chapter 15, verse 11. Let's go, guys. One, two, and go. Exodus, Exodus chapter 15, verse 11. Who among the gods is like you, O Lord? Who is like you? Majestic, holiness, awesome, and glory. Amen. 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 All right. So there is a song actually based on this scripture, and that's what we are going to learn very quickly. And to go there, if you could put that up as well. Mm -hmm. Our song for today, Among the Gods, Who Is Like You. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. All right. So, mm -hmm. whilst Antigoda gets that, all right. Mm -hmm. So, it says that, Who is like unto thee, O Lord? Who is like Unto thee, oh Lord, who is like unto thee, oh Lord, who is like unto thee, oh Lord, among the gods who is like thee you are glorious in holiness fearful in praises doing wonders hallelujah you are glorious in holiness fearful in praise Do wonders hallelujah amen so let's go through it from the top ready guys who is like um uh yeah who's like on tv ready one and go who oh, is like on to the who is like unto thee? Oh, Lord. One more time. Who is like unto thee? Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. Who is like unto thee? Oh, 
You are glorious in holiness, fearful in praise. To you we wonders hallelujah. Among the gods, among the gods. Who is like me? You are glorious and fearful in praise. Do in wonder. If you think about it, look at the lesson we just had. Mm. You know, imagine Paul and Silas singing a song like this in the prison. Like, who is like you, O Lord? Who is like you? Among the gods, who is like you? He is glorious in holiness. When God is in his, in his holiness and he shows up, it's so beautiful. But then look at what they say. He's fearful in praise. That is why... Paul and Silas experienced the surprise, the shock of an earthquake, right? When we give God praise, he's fearful. Like, you don't even know what he's going to do. You don't know the reaction he's going to give us. Like James told us earlier, noises, thunderings, earthquakes, all kinds of things can happen when we praise him. And he does what? Wonders. Hallelujah. So let's sing it one more time. And then I think we can wrap up for today. Amen. Amen. So, ready? You guys ready? This time with understanding. Who is like on today? One, two, and go. Who is like on today? Oh, Lord. Who is like on today? Oh, oh, Lord, who is like unto thee? Oh, Lord, who is like unto thee? Oh, Lord, I'm on the God. You are glorious in holiness, fearful in praise. Do we wonders? Hallelujah. You are glorious in holiness, fearful. In praise, to be on goodness, hallelujah. Amen. 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 Oh, this is an atmosphere of worship, guys. This is powerful. This is wonderful. You see, Elder James just taught us there's power in our worship and there's power in our praise. May the Lord bless you, precious ones. Never, ever forget, wherever you find yourself, whether in good times or bad times, put your praise song on. Put your worship song on and begin to worship God. And guess what? There will be a shaking. There will be earthquakes. And when that happens, you know what is happening? God is removing all obstacles, just as he did for Paul and Silas. Oh, wow. That is amazing. So our praise is our weapon. God bless you all so much. And I'm hoping that this week you will be in an atmosphere of worship and praise. Elder James, God bless you so much for coming our way. We always enjoy when you come over because 
we know you have something special God has prepared for you to give to us. So let us all say God bless you to Uncle James. God bless you. God bless you. And then let us say bye for now to all our friends. So we'll meet them again on Saturday. Bye bye, everyone. Bye, Have a blessed week. Bye. And God bless bye. you. Bye. Bless you. Bye. Bye. bye.